uh, it's really a pleasure to be among so many friends uh, again. So thank you very much for including me in the in this event. Yes, we are here to discuss the tobacco industry interference in tobacco control. It is one of the most important parts of the WHO Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, or WHO FCTC, as you know, we call it, and it's covered by Article 5.3, which recognizes that this is a very, very serious threat to public health. We should always remember that tobacco has some unusual characteristic. It's the only legal product that if you use it as their manufacturer tell you to use it, it will kill up to half of their users. Also, there is another unusual characteristic that there is an industry behind it that throughout the years has profited from disease and death, preying on young people to hook the new users that they are vital for its survival. And this is truly industry also is extremely rich. And like super rich everywhere, it's money buys a lot of influence. Today, I want to talk about the effect of tobacco interference, particularly in one area, the environment, because usually this is the one we talk less about. Sustainable development is impossible without environmental protection. It's one of the three pillars of sustainability, but we don't talk about it enough. How does the tobacco industry harm the environment? In many ways, it depletes soil, it contributes to deforestation and desertification, and pollutes water, to name just a few. And it leaves tobacco filters scattered across our environment. They are not biodegradable, and they last for long periods. And the litter is either left to clutter and potion, or is cleared up by the rest of us. The tobacco industry does not pay Instead, local people pay using their taxes. Research shows that up to 4.5 trillion bats are discarded improperly every year. 4.5 trillion cigarette bats. That is 680,000 metric tons of plastics. This may be considered minor compared with the weight of other plastic waste, but this is not just plastic, it's also toxic waste. People think, well, at least filters help people. They make smoking safer, right? Wrong. The tobacco industry introduced filters in the 1950s in a dishonest attempt to convince addicts that they represented a safely improvement by stopping tar getting into the lungs. Like so many other statements from the tobacco industry, this was, as I said, dishonest. Filters made no significant difference to smoker health, or even worse, they help to make smokers going to keep smoking when they have, may have quit something because there is something now that they think is safer. And they do make a significant and very negative difference in our environment. You might know that the tobacco industry has been an enthusiastic adopter of the so-called environmental, social, and government governance agenda, the, S S the ESG agenda. The ordinary person might think that gives the industry a chance to detail how it's going to clean up its mess. But the industry, as you, you, the experts, <laughs> all know, it is not very ethical. ESG has, has allowed the industry to set its own targets and then to accept its own applause when it achieves them. Or, as in the case of cigarette filters, blame the user from the problem, and I quote, by engaging with consumers through impactful awareness raising campaigns, we believe that we can drive behavioral change and encourage the correct disposals of cigarette butts with the ultimate goal of reducing littering. These words are from PMI website. And this brings us to the its corporate social responsibility program, the CSR programs. It is very clear that tobacco CSR is simply an industry fig leaf to conceal the damage that the industry produced, and to impersonate a good corporate citizen and so sneak into government discussions where it worked to sabotage work to limit its interest. It's this, we know, better described as corporate, corporate social irresponsibility, and we have four trillion ways to prove this. When related to the environment, this behavior is not as greenwashing, but as any other form of CSR, is in an attempt to look good when your behavior is bad. So the question is, who can stop them? You can, and by you, I mean civil society. This group of motivated citizens are central to the fight against tobacco. 
They are the eyes and ears of this movement. They provide detailed local intelligence on what's happening. They are also our voice. They speak out what is happening in their countries or regions, and they work to make sure governments and parliaments know the issue, that the media is well informed, and that the alarm is raised when the tobacco industry is caught interfering with the policy making process. Article 5.3 is a powerful instrument. It states that parties must protect public health policy from commercial and other vested interests of the tobacco industry and its guidelines for implementation at and from those who work to further its interests. Governments can be forgetful or simply overwhelmed with problems. So it's sometimes useful to remind them of their obligations under the WHO FCTC. Remind them that this is not a choice, it's a commitment they have chosen to make. There is plenty of room for further work among parties to protect us from the tobacco industry and to make it pay for the damages it does. Thank you very much, I have a wonderful event.